that whom I write uh, small death that pieces of world that once was green. Um, in 2007, I decided to paint it a vibrant green, like Dennis, Dennis Rodman here, or Ronald McDonald. Um, and when that experience, and using a lot of, I leaned carelessly, and I used to come to something called the testicular torsion. This is something that a lot of people know about. Um, and it takes this story, oh my testicles, it takes you across four days in the healthcare industry. So I'm just, I'm just going to read excerpts because I know we have certain time. But I started as a pr practitioner, then I go to Mount Hope, then I go to private healthcare, and then to Port of Spain. So I'm leaving out a little piece here to go at the practitioner's office. <coughs> the practitioner appeared, reappeared abruptly and scolded my disobedience. Should I take off my boxers, I asked, honestly. How else do you expect me to see the problem? He disappeared again and behind the partition, the long lamentation of patient and an old woman resumed. I arose from the bed as with the croaking of old furniture and took the curtain shut until a disinterested Roxanne, my cousin, vanished from view. I removed my boxers, cupped my groin, and lay down again, trusting that the bedsheet wasn't also celebrating its 25th anniversary <laughs> and had been sanitized since its last use. Dr. Narain, the beloved workaholic, reappeared, equipped with surgical gloves, and unknowingly he became the first of many who would inspect my testicles over the next few days. The sensation of the pungent, moist latex was not a rose. <laughs> and I had dully and fearfully departed. <laughs> You're looking for that. <laughs> As I had dully and fearfully imagined it would have been. Yet stupidly, I concluded that this was due to the masculinity of the medical exclusion. <laughs> I closed my eyes but failed to gain comfort within the darkness of my mind, as, and Dr. Narain must have sensed my distress because he said, Do you know that the last time you were here, you were two years old? <laughs> A severe squeeze jolted my private, as if he intended to learn why I hadn't visited more frequently. <laughs> but before I could shriek a response, he cried. Does it hurt when I do this? I nodded. His index finger and thumb felt like a vice clamping my right testicle. He probed around some more, squeezing my testicles here and there like a medicine ball, then suddenly stopped, removed his gloves, told me to clad myself quickly, and without waiting for me to do so, retracted the fist and revealed my cousin. <laughs> he assumed the tone of a calm businessman, but businessman. But his face betrayed a strenuous mark which worried me. This is serious. You have a condition known as testicular torsion, but thank goodness it's only rudimentary. You need immediate surgery or you will lose your right testicle. When he perceived my confusion, he smoothly flipped to the jargon of the grassroots. It has lines that have carried blood to your balls. <laughs> Sometimes they could twist to its motion. <laughs> It does not have to be a street, it can be anything. And when that happens, it becomes kinked like a hose, thereby preventing blood, which keeps the testicles alive. If they don't get blood for a long time, your balls could die, and you basically have to cut them off. <laughs> Dr. Ren Dr. Narain looked at me, I looked at Roxanne, she looked at the doctor. He paused, patted his pockets, as if he had lost something, and finally found the pad and penny sort in his shoe jacket. He scribbled some hurried, legible lines, tore the sheet from the pad, and passed it to me. Take this to Mount Topi orders, and they will treat your situation as an emergency. <laughs> so I went to Mount Topi, and from there I had to go to private um, health care because I went to the three hours, and it wasn't resolved. So I've spent a night now in private health care, and this is the next morning. At 11 o'clock, my $300 a visit. And our doctor hadn't appeared. I felt sorely abandoned and wished to weep bitterly, but didn't. Instead, I opted to telephone my brother, the son, whose raucous voice greeted me on the other end of the line. One stone! <laughs> hey, boy, we're going to cook that thing when you lose it, right? <laughs> this is true, this is a picture. How, how do you think it is to you? <laughs> Now, 
I feel I'm for rescuing the real thing. I laughed out loud from then a streak of pain in my lower right stomach. I can start the area and listen as he migrated to a more serious stone. They lend on the people that rob you away. When they're done with you, you have no stones and no money. <laughs> the culminating scenario, I mentioned that the doctor hadn't yet seen me for the morning, despite the detrimental nature of my seeds. <laughs> when he spoke again, his voice was filled with aggression. You see them bastards out there? Anyway, boy, don't worry, I have a plan. I groaned. My brother's plan, while comprehensive, are usually chimeras. However, being desperate, I listened. <laughs> to give his plan credibility, he retreated familiar ground and concluded, Dread, you need to get out of there, or them people will rob you by the hour. The doctor just wanted to stay in the room so he could make money and the police could make a thing on the side. You paid for every tablet, meal, and balls inspection through your teeth. <laughs> and at the end of it, he doesn't even guarantee to have two balls. <laughs> It's better you let the government cut it off for free. <laughs> I imagine the laughter on his face, but his voice betrayed nothing. You need to get the surgery for free, he continued. So here what? I have a partner in Fort Spain General Hospital that's open from 4 o'clock today. He says that he could get you admitted straight into casualty. The plan sounded excellent, causing me to nod positively. However, I have one problem, he said, and I stopped nodding and listened. The problem is that you cannot be a walking patient. You have to arrive in an ambulance. <laughs> okay, but Lassana, where the hell I get in an ambulance? Like, right? So I'll, I'll stop there and jump ahead. So I'll leave you wondering how I get an ambulance, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, I'm in Fort Espin General Hospital now. Ward 21, the surgical ward, was at the pinnacle of one of the towers in the Eastern Block. It was a capacious need room with a myriad of beds which lacked patients as if everyone was in surgery. Suddenly, not one, two, or three, but eight doctors stormed into my pen and surrounded my bed like excited archaeologists. <laughs> it was a cos cosmopolitan set of youths who struck me as too inexperienced and cherry to be doctors or surgeons, but they were dressed the rules, so I guess students, students, in terms, in terms, sorry. The one to my left, the petite East Indian girl, spoke briefly on behalf of the others. Hi, we are all student doctors, and we are afraid that you have this problem which we would like to talk to you about. Is this okay with you? I depressed the control of my bed until I was erect. <laughs> and I to see in each face, wondering who would be the bravest to request an inspection. <laughs> Even the only male in the group looked like a girl with a shoulder length here. I know that okay. The pair skin and tail with short rusty locks spoke. We understand you have a condition known as testicular torsion, and it's quite uncommon. Have you ever heard about this before? Before no, Monday, no, I admitted. The male pipe, do you know what you have? Every group has a bow, and because the African student has listened to him, rolled her eyes, I entertained the testicular torsion. An African girl opposite the tiny and thin asked, so what symptoms did you notice or feel before the event? Nothing, it occurred all of a sudden as I was painting. Then I rubbed my skin and declared that even a fever, even though it is one of the symptoms. So you notice any symptoms like fever or anything? <laughs> <laughs> the same African and still nudged them sharply with her elbow. Then the compartment was engulfed in silence. Almost as if on cue, the huge Nigerian, that's a doctor from Malaya, returned and began interrogating his minions. He looked at me and to my disbelief, casually inquired. So, you want to show it to them? <laughs> Anything for academics, I believe. <laughs> and live from the press. My pants came off first, then my boxers. The bandage had unstuck and now dangled around my balls like tassels. Mere ego stepped in and I was disappointed at my manner. A flaccid elephant trunk and battered table tennis balls, which had been mashed, boiled, abused, and boiled again. Do you want to feel it too, I asked? Display the spectacles in the room by grinding my wheels in a semi-circle. <laughs> Only the bandage was large enough to flog up. <laughs> I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> I, um, wait. Thank you very much. <laughs>